Now, you better do as he says. Because Chester's a little nervous with that shotgun. There's mine. Looks like the odds are with you, so... You might as well get rid of that spare in your boot, Vic, before you run into any temptations. <laughs> you got sharp eyes, Marshal. Law gets a lot of backing up tonight. Your mistake, Vic. Sometimes people just don't give Chester enough credit. Ah, chow time. Hmm. Beef steak, fried potatoes, stewed corn. Marshal, I must say, you run a nice jail, don't he, Curry? No. <laughs> Don't mind Curry. He's a little depressed about last night. You still run a nice jail. Something on your mind, Marshal? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a couple of things. Such as? Oh, such as your father spending money he hasn't earned. Claim it to know where he can get more. Mm-hmm. Paul sure a terrible liar. Mm-hmm. Such as him getting shot at twice and refusing to talk about it. Or help me investigate. Paul's a little bashful, too. Yeah. Such as his being afraid of you. Hmm. I guess Paul's getting old, little daughtery. Yeah. Then, of course, there's you. Well, now you're on my favorite subject. Go on. Well, you're a killer and a thief. <clears throat> But you're cool and smart. Smart enough to educate yourself. I had lots of time to read in the pen. Lots of time. You're going to have more. But not much more. Because you're going to hang for those guards that you killed. Maybe. Curry, ain't you going to eat that? Mm-mm. Now, go on about me being smart. You're smart enough to know the most dangerous place for you to go after you escaped was here. Well, it looks like I ain't as smart as you think. It depends on what reason you had for risking coming here. Boy, that's your good coffee. First jail I was ever in where the coffee was fit to drink. Oh, thank you. Okay, Marshal. Now, just what was my reason? The reason was money. Money? Cash. It's the only thing that would give you a chance to get out of the country. You're in for robbery as well as murder. How much of the loot was recovered? You know how it is, Marshal. Easy come, easy go. I spent it as fast, well, nearly as fast as I got it. So nothing was recovered, huh? No, it was all gone. It was all hidden, you mean? Hidden until Jed found it. Paul? Sure. That's his source of money. It's also why he was afraid to go with you. <laughs> like I said, too bad we're on opposite sides. You got brains and you use them. You want to fill in the details for me? I'll tell you this. You're right about my cash of money. I'd had it and be on my way to Mexico by now if Paul hadn't switched hiding places on me. You know, it hurts. Paul's turning against me. Yeah, yeah. The Tolmans always stick together. Except when money's involved. How about you, Marshal? Money by you? Sky's the limit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll figure it out. Well, <clears throat> been a nice chap. Won't take you straight. <laughs> Hurry, give me a hand. All right, back up, Curry. That's it. And tell Vic when he wakes up to take it easy. Or he won't live to be hung. Hey, Jingle Bob. Yeah. You seen Jed? Oh, sorry, Marshal. I don't know where Jed is. Been looking for him myself. <clears throat> Golly, I'm cold. He must have left town last night. Yeah. Ain't you cool? I got an old jacket you can have. I'd rather have a shot. Better steal two shots. 
You got the jumps? Always oh, got them, except one full booze. Funny, you won't believe it, but there was a time when I couldn't stand the taste of hard liquor. Made me sick. No, can't live without it. Yes, you can. Well, maybe. Let's say I don't want to. Let's say that... Here. Huh? Go buy yourself a drink. Hey, hey, that's enough for a whole bottle. Well, uh, wait, James, uh, see you later, Marshal. Supper time, Chester. Chester. Chester, you all right? The prisoners? Gone. Hannah Tolman slipped him a gun. And they made me open up the cell, and Vic slugged me. Well, I know where they'll go. Please, Mr. Dillon, take me along. It was my fault they escaped. All right, Chester. Ask the doctor to put a quick patch on that head, and we'll go after him together. Starting to get dark. Yeah. Why'd we leave the road back there? I wanted to reach that rise, Chester. But we circled around to come up the back side. Does that have something to do with you bringing binoculars? Yeah, it does. Vic Tolman will know he'll be followed. I want to see what kind of a surprise he has for us. All right, pull up. You wait here. Anything? No. Not yet. Now wait. I knew now. Yeah, it's Curry, all right. He's holed up in some brush just beyond the turn in the road down there. Well, what do we do, Mr. Dillon? Uh, take the horses and circle back the way we came. Start up the road. But don't make the turn. I understand. Now be sure. As long as you don't make the turn, you'll be safe. But uh, I do want you to make some noise. Noise? Yeah, I want you to sing, whistle, throw rocks, anything. Just so long as it holds Curry's attention. It was slow work. Crawling down through the brush, but finally I was only ten feet behind Curry's position. The gunman was holding a rifle trained on the turn. And out of sight, coming up the road, I could hear Chester. Well, he wasn't good, but he was loud. I'm going around that turn, blast you. All right, don't turn around, Curry. What? Now, you may have a point, but I like Chester. Bad singing and all. Now lay the rifle aside. And unbuckle your gun belt. Now, careful. Yeah, sure, sure. Only don't shoot. Okay. Chester! Chester! I didn't mean no harm. I, I was only going to scare him. Yeah. Now, where's Vic? At the Tolman house. Waiting for Jed to show up. Uh-huh. All right, put your hands behind your back. Mm. I'm going to tie you up and leave you here. What? Leave me here? Yeah, we'll pick you up on the way back to town. It was dark when Chester and I were moving through the trees up to the Tolman shack. There was a light in the front, and through a window we could see the figure of Hannah Tolman moving around. Just a girl. Yeah, Vic's there. He just stand out of sight so Jed won't be scared off. Uh oh. She's coming out, heading this way. And there must be a well out here. She's carrying a bucket. And behind that tree, quick, and I'll take this one. What do you think you're... All right, now, quiet down. We're not going to hurt you. Stop fighting. Chester, grab her legs quick. Yes, sir. 
I was saving these handcuffs for Vic, but I guess they'll do for you. There. Now, do you promise to be quiet or do we gag you? All right, have it your way. Chester, give me your bandana. Yes, sir. Here. There, that should do it. All right, stay with her, Chester. I'm going for Vic. I was halfway to the shack when inside Vic Tolman became suspicious. Suddenly the lights went out, and the door opened, and the shadowy figure slipped out to stand, listening. Anna? Anna, answer me. Drop him, Vic. Who is that? I can't see. Matt Dillon. Throw down those guns. You're under arrest. Not this time. <laughs> Vic? Yeah. You were right, Marshal. I ain't gonna live to... I ain't. Vic. Mr. Dillon? Over here! Hey, uh, what is it, Chester? Who's that, Jed? <laughs> yes, sir. I caught him sneaking towards the house. He was carrying this bag. Here, let me see. Uh, That's the money. I, I was taking it to Vic. Is he... Yeah. You're too late, Jed. Oh, no. I'd have given him his money. If only he hadn't taken them shots at me. He didn't. Until he found out where the money was hidden, he was the last person in the world to want you dead. But, uh... I don't understand. He, he must no. be... No. Only the person who knew where you had the money would have shot at you. Nobody knew that. How could they? Who, who you could... talk a lot when you get drunk, Jed. And you only get drunk with one person. Huh? You mean... You mean Jingle Bob? Yeah. Yeah. I remember. I was bragging. Told him all about finding it and switching hiding places. Where well, that low-down snake... And him pretending to be my friend. Come on, Jed. I'll help you bury Vic. Then we'll get back to Dodge. We Tolman sure have had a bad week. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Herb Purdom, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in tonight's cast were Virginia Gregg, Joseph Kearns, and Junius Matthews, with Harry Bartell, Lou Krugman, and Peter Leeds. Parley Bear is Chester. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Remember, America must produce as she never has before. She must produce war materials, civilian goods, and above all, democracy. Only an all-out effort in all three directions will give us security against aggression. George Walsh speaking, and remember, Gangbusters goes into action Saturday nights on the CBS Radio Network. Mm-hmm.